for nodular sclerosis, why it is called nodular sclerosis? Because the node under the microscope will be seen as nodules. How it becomes nodules? You do find fibrous strands separating them into nodules. So, fibrous strands are part and parcel of every case of nodular sclerosis of Hodgkin lymphoma we come across. And uh, infant infection of plasmuses, do we find this? Yes, of course, because Hodgkin lymphoma is one of the uh, very few examples where we find the neoplastic cells constituting roughly around 5 percent. The rest 95 percent is contributed, is uh, constituted by the reactive population. What reactive population? You do find plasmuses many, you do find eosinophils many, you do find neutrophils and other native lymphocytes. How are these cells recruited? By the expression of cytokines, the ligands by the and the tactic uh, substances by the Hodgkin RSS, yeah, reach term bug cells. Right? So, Hodgkin lymphoma, the uh, neoplastic cells will be very less, the reach term bug cells will be very less in number. So, you have a reactive background which is composed also of plasma cells. Okay, true about thromboxane A2. So, thromboxane, what it is? It is a product of cyclooxygenase pathway of arachidonic acid metabolism. Arachidonic acid undergoes how many pathways? Pathways, it undergoes four pathways. One is the age old, first found, first discovered cyclooxygenous pathway. Next is the lipoxygenous pathway, which gives, generates us the leukotriene to the lipoxins. And next is the epoxygenase pathway, cytochrome P450 epoxygenase pathway. And then is the isoprostane pathway. Cytochrome P450 epoxygenase pathway will result in generation of epoxides. And the last isoprostane pathway involves no enzyme. Here they derive their out, um, uh, products with the help of non enzymatic free radical mediated generation of isoprostins. That's about it. So, coming to cyclooxygenase pathway generate prostaglandins and thromboxin A2. Since prostaglandin, the immediate, uh, immediate molecules from cyclooxygenase pathway will be PDG2H2, after which it divides and gives rise to thromboxin and PGI2. So, it's, it's understood. Thromboxin A2 is formed from PDG2 and PGH2 fine. And why it's called thromboxin A2? If, if you give the answer as it has an effect on platelets, even prostacycline has an effect on platelets. It also should be given the name. No. The reason is the uh, cellular formation of thromboxin is to platelets. Then from where they get the PGI2, prostacycline? Where the cellular form is endothelium. So thromboxin A2 is from platelet, from thromboxygenase and it is prothrombogenic because the major function of thromboxin A2 is blood vessel construction and platelet aggregation. So when platelet aggregate, it will set the stage for the clotting factors to clot, activate, get activated and form a fibrin clot. It is prothrombogenic. Is it a vasoconstrictor? Yes, of course. It has a dominant role. Is it a vasodilator? It can't be. So, it is self contradictory, even then we know it does the vasoconstriction work very well. So, that's thromboxin A2 from platelets, prostacycline from endothelial cell. And this, this uh, I just selected this picture mainly to stress it is from its precursors PGG2 and PGH2. So, it functions to vasoconstrict and to aggregate the platelet. Here it is to dilate the blood vessel and take it. So it will just counteract, but it balances. So when there is domination by the PGI2, there is vasodilation. When there is domination by the thrombus A2, there is vasoconstriction clot formation like that. So true about thromboxin A2 is formed by the platelet, formed by PGG2H2. Of course, it is prothrombogenic. It is a vasoconstrictor. So, answers are actually wrong. Just go by the explanation, not by the answers typed over here. I, I just keep repeating this for the repetition of the mistakes. Yes. Asbestosis is associated with, you know, this asbestosis uh, is due to chronic inhalation exposure to asbestos fibers. Fine. And this earlier days, it was associated one, it was, it was proved that 
lung disorders, certain lung disorders were associated with asbestos like pleural effusion, your pleural box, interstitial fibrosis and lung malignancy. Which lung malignancy? Which lung malignancy? Most common lung malignancy associated with asbestosis is squamous cell carcinoma lung. Fine. And most specific lung cancer, uh, most specific malignancy associated with asbestosis is mesothelioma. It's like that. So the most common is squamous cell carcinoma lung. Fine. So these were the associations of asbestosis till at least a decade ago. The past seven, eight years, things have changed. It's asbestos doesn't stop with harmful effects only with lungs. It has got some other effects too. What are all these? It is associated with like this. It is associated with CA larynx, CA colon, and others. Okay, so like mostly this is gaining more importance nowadays. CA larynx and CA colon. So what is the histopathological finding of asbestosis? You do find interstitial fibers in the lung. In the plural plus different everything fibrosis fibrosis. Effusion is fine. That's different. As long as there is no malignancy, effusion will be clear. The fluid will be clear. But in case of malignancy developing, it will become hemorrhagic, exudative, and other things. And uh, asbestosis, pathologically, the findings will be fi uh, fibrosis, interstitial fibrosis, later resulting in honeycomb lung, and the presence of asbestos body, which is not very easy to pick up, you know, like, it's, and it's not a 100% confirmed finding. Listen, every case of asbestosis will have asbestosis, but it need not be. It all depends upon its uh, extent of the disease, site of biopsy, and other things. So asbestos body and ferruginous body is one asbestos body is like one type of ferruginous body. It's associated with CA lung, ascites, it's very non-specific answer like that. There is pure effusion, uh, mesothelial cells of the uh, peripheral cavity is also affected resulting in ascites. That's all it says. Adenocarcinoma lung, mesothelioma. And uh, carcinoma colon, sorry, this is associated with adenocarcinoma of lung. Let's go. Inherited coagulation defect with coagulation is found. The question is, I, I really got confused with me, the question is way it's been made. The question is, okay. So the question is, which among the following is the inherited coagulation defect? Inherited coagulopathy, that's the question. Okay, so the answer is all everything. So protein C, protein S deficiency, antithromin 3 deficiency, protein C resistance, this fibrinogenemia, A fibrinogenemia, hypofibrinogenemia, all these are inherited disorders of coagulation. Fine. So this is the case. Even your homocystinemia can be congenital or acquired. Right? So congenital case, in that case, it will be inherited. Which is the most common inherited cause of coagulopathy? The answer is factor 5 laden mutation. Then comes a prothrombin gene mutation. Then comes the antithrombin 3 deficiency and all. So the most common cause is factor 5 laden gene mutation. And this low complement level seen in. So this. Uh, this again a repetition. We have started the discussion with this. And it's true about celiac disease. Celiac disease is one of the high yield area in the PG entrance examination. So celiac disease, you know, like the uh, the way the patient mounts an immune response, then he is he or she is exposed to gluten part of the gluten part of the wheat. The gluten. So gluten is a part of alcohol soluble wheat in uh, alcohol soluble water insoluble part found in wheat, rye, oat, barley, often asked. So, uh, which among the following cereals doesn't have uh, gluten like that? So, it's a must know. So, wheat, rye, oat, barley will have gluten. So, when such a patient who has got the genetic susceptibility, when he or she gets exposed to gluten, so the immediately he mounts the immune response. Immune response and this is not like rashes, breathing difficulty and all. It, what happens is you have, have an immediate abdominal distension, abdominal discomfort, slowly setting the stage for malabsorption. So what happens so when he or she takes in gluten, that gluten part is considered as foreign um, and immediate mount, uh, response is mounted. So by virtue of what, in such a patient, 
has possess DQ2 or DQ8. HLA DQ2 DQ8 consistently associated with development of celiac sprue, uh, celiac disease. Fine. So in that case, it's been a uh, Trans, uh, trans glutaminase will convert the gluten and present and then mounting immune responses takes place. Fine. 